As the previous video showed, whenever we have a right triangle and we draw in the altitude that extends from the vertex of the right angle to the hypotenuse, it creates two right triangles and all of the triangles are similar to each other. All of that is summarized in what we call the right triangle similarity theorem. So for your notes, if the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the two triangles formed are similar to the original triangle and similar to each other, right? And it's pretty easy to prove just simply based on angle angle, as we saw in that little activity, that if we're able to match up angles, so for example here, angle A on this right triangle on the original one matches up with the medium size angle A right here, and they both have right angles, so they must be similar by angle angle. Then I do the same thing for the blue one, the small one. Well, it shares angle B with the original triangle. It has a right angle, just like this one has a right angle. So by angle angle, they're similar to each other. And then you can use the transitive property to say that the red one is similar to the blue one. They're all similar to each other. Okay, so sometimes what we need to do is uh, we have our right triangle with that extra altitude drawn in there to the hypotenuse, and we want to we want to write a similarity statement that says here are all three triangles which are similar to each other. In this instance, I would suggest drawing separately each of the right triangles in the same orientation, facing the same direction, so you can label each one of your vertices. Let's take a look. Okay, so let me slide down here, make it nice and dizzy. There it is finally. So identify the similar triangles in this diagram. So I'm going to draw the tiny one. So this tiny one, maybe I will draw it in, let's say, blue over here. I'm going to redraw that one first, but I'm going to rotate it around, flip it around and stuff so that it is all facing the same direction as this larger one here. And then label each one of the points. So here's our blue one and uh, the easiest one I find to start with is the right angle. So the right angle for the blue triangle is right here at U. And then you want to draw it exaggerated if you can so that you can definitely see that you have a shorter leg versus a longer leg, right? So our shorter leg here is this leg here at US, which means that this missing point on the top is an S. And then for our longer leg, the longer leg here is this UT, so this T is our last one, right? And then perhaps in magenta here, I will do this medium size one. But give me a second as I color this in perfectly. Almost there, almost there, just wait for it. <gasps> Boop, there we go. Uh, yeah, so in magenta here, Going to draw it in the same orientation, just a little bit larger. And just like we did before, we'll start at the right angle. So the right angle for the magenta one is also at U. You just zoomed in there for no reason. Okay, and then the shorter leg, the shorter leg here is UT. This shorter, boop, whoops, this shorter leg here. I don't know what's going on here, which is a two. And by two, I mean T. All right, and that leaves this last vertex here of an R. All right, now we're ready to write ourselves a similarity statement that says that all three of these right triangles are similar to each other. So let's start with the, uh, the original one. The original one, you can start with any letter that you want to. Let's call it SRT. And now go in the exact same order for each of the other ones. So SRT started here, and then that one, and then that one. Okay, so SRT is going to correspond to triangle STU, so that the right angles match up. And then on the medium size one going in the same order, it should be triangle TRU. Now, sure, I may not always have to redraw it. Some of us are a little bit better than others at being able to just visualize where each one of those letters are supposed to go. Another benefit of redrawing the triangles like this is that 
we're sometimes going to have some missing side lengths and we need to set up a proportion to find them. And redrawing the triangles can sometimes help you figure out which piece matches up with which other piece. Like, oh, look at this. Oh, here's our answer too. Here's a slightly different way to write it. And uh, yeah, there you go. All right. Example two. Find the value of x. And notice that x here is the length of the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse. And we have ourselves a good old-fashioned 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So what I'm going to do is exactly what I did on the previous example. I'm just going to redraw one of the triangles. Let's say I'm going to redraw this small triangle here. I'm going to redraw it so that it matches up in the same orientation as the original one. Boop. And then exaggerate it so that it's obvious that you have a short side and a longer side. All right. Now, on that right triangle, we only have two pieces of information. We have the x and we have the 3. The 3 is on the hypotenuse, so I'm going to label that 3 on the hypotenuse. The x is on the longer of the two sides, so I need to put it on the longer of the two sides. The shorter side, which is EH up here, I don't know how big it is. It's some portion of 5. How big it is for this problem is unimportant. Because we have enough information, we know that this small one is similar to the larger one, we can set ourselves up some kind of proportion in order to solve for that length. So I'm going to set up a ratio, a proportion I should say, 3 to 5, 3 to 5, those hypotenuses, should be equal to x to 4. Easy. And now cross multiply this thing, I would have... 5x along one of these diagonals is equal to 12 along the other diagonal. Cross multiplying, set them equal to each other. And x is equal to 12 over 5. Or if you prefer, that would go in there, let's see, 2 times with 2 left over, 0. 0.4, 2.4. Okay. Yep, yep. All right, so there's basically uh, an example of uh, using this right triangle similarity theorem that we just came up with in order to solve for the length of the altitude. All right, but there's more. Tune in to the next couple of videos to see how we apply this thing that we're going to call the geometric mean.